What's up guys, it's James Allen, the out-of-state investor, and today we're gonna go over the four things that you must know before you ever start investing in real estate. Over the years, I've heard many nightmare stories of people losing either thousands of dollars or even more than their entire investment. So to avoid this happening to you, I'm gonna go over four things today that will not only make you feel more confident investing in real estate, but in addition to that, you're also gonna be less likely to lose a lot of money doing it. But before I get started, do me a favor, support the channel and smash that like button, and if you haven't already done so, you know what you need to do. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to watch more videos like this. And with that said, let's jump into it. The first thing you want to do before you ever start investing in real estate is get a good grasp of the fundamentals. You really want to take the time to properly educate yourself and understand exactly what you're doing before you take a big leap into a risky investment like real estate. You see, knowledge is not just a way to increase your returns, it's also a way to seriously mitigate your risk. And that's why I literally spent over 15 months educating myself before I ever even purchased my first rental property. I mean, I was listening to podcasts, I was reading books. I was joining RIA group meetings. I was doing everything I could to educate myself for 15 months before I ever even purchased one rental property. Now that might sound a little excessive, but the reality is, is there is a lot of things that go into real estate investing, many that you might not know about up front. And so taking that time just to simply educate yourself and just understand the basic fundamentals is gonna do so much to increase your return on investment and take away so much of the risk. A few basic things you really wanna familiarize yourself with is some basic terminology like things like ARV, value add, price per square foot, but also understand some of the basics when it comes to the tax benefits you get with real estate, when it comes to how financing works. So that way you can do everything in your power to do great when it comes to qualifying for a loan or when it comes to refinancing. You'll also want to know how to properly analyze the deal. So that way you know exactly how much money you're going to make on a property. So that means understanding exactly all the different forms of income you can make. Also, so all your expenses you're gonna incur while you're holding the property. You're also gonna to wanna to learn how to analyze comparables. That's just basically the like kind properties and that's gonna help you figure out what you might be able to sell a property for after fixing it up or even if you're gonna go the refinancing route, what it might appraise for. Another important metric you wanna learn is cash on cash return. That's basically the return on investment you're getting based on the cash you're investing into the property. Now as you get into more advanced things, you'll wanna to touch on things like NOI, your cap rates, your IR, are, but the point that I'm trying to make here is there is a lot of information to learn when it comes to real estate investing and getting a grasp of the basic fundamentals is essential if you want to mitigate your risk and boost your return on investment. Now the second thing you need to know before you ever start investing in real estate is what are your goals? When it comes to your goals in real estate, the first thing I look at is are you investing for cash flow or are you investing for appreciation or are you investing for a combination of both? You see, each market offers a different benefit. In a market like Los Angeles, you're gonna get massive appreciation and very little cash flow. Whereas in a market like Memphis or Detroit, you're gonna get pretty good cash flow, but you're not gonna get very good appreciation. Now that's on a macro level, but if we kind of take it a step deeper, we're gonna look at the neighborhood itself and what kind of quality neighborhood is it within that market? Because that's also gonna determine are you gonna cash flow better or go for more appreciation? You see, if you want better appreciation long-term, you're gonna target neighborhoods with good schools, with low crime, with newer amenities. Whereas with cash flow, we're typically gonna target lower quality neighborhoods and there's a greater risk involved with that, which is why you wanna justify it with the greater cash flow. Now, I personally found that being somewhere in the middle is really the sweet spot. You don't wanna be in the worst neighborhoods because you're gonna deal with constant evictions and problem tenants. And you also don't wanna be in the best areas because you're probably not gonna get much cash flow, if any. So being in the middle is where you're gonna get that combination of cash flow and appreciation. You also wanna consider the property type you're going for. Are you going for a single family? Are you going for a condo or a townhouse? Are you going for a small multifamily or even a large multifamily? All of these have pros and cons. I actually made a video on single family versus multifamily. If you guys wanna check that out, link above or below in the description. Now for me personally, I tend not to invest into condos and that's because they come with HOA fees that will eat into your cash flow. And in addition to that, you're also dealing with slower appreciation rates compared to single family and they're typically harder to sell as well. So if you were a 
beginner, what I would recommend going with is either a single family or a small multifamily property. It's got great financing with 30 year fixed rates and you can get in with a down payment that's actually not a crazy amount of money out of your pocket. The third thing you need to know before you ever invest in real estate is you have to know your market inside and out. You really wanna to get to know the good neighborhoods and the bad neighborhoods. And one of the best tools I like to use for this is realtor.com and neighborhoodscout.com. They have some great interactive crime maps. And these crime maps are gonna show you area by area exactly what the crime looks like. Another thing I recommend checking out is citydata.org because that is gonna give you access to the median income levels area by area. And you can kind of see if an area is averaging maybe $10,000 a year income or $20,000 a year income, you're probably not dealing with the best quality tenants. Now you don't wanna stop there. You also wanna to get to know the good and bad streets. And the best way to do this, hands down, is you gotta visit your market in person. Maybe it's in your backyard already, so that's not a problem. But if you're investing out of state like I do, you wanna fly out to your market and you wanna drive street by street by street to get to know every street inside and out so you're not gonna buy a property that's on that one bad street. Now once you've done that, you also wanna understand where the gentrifying areas are. Where is the path of progress? Where is the rapid change taking place? And the best way to figure this out is talking to your local flippers. You wanna understand where are they flipping houses? You wanna understand where is the city pouring in millions of dollars into redevelopments or things of that nature because that's gonna tell you exactly which areas are primed for some rapid appreciation. All right, the fourth and final thing you need to know before you ever invest in real estate is you gotta know what a good deal looks like in your market. The first thing you wanna figure out is what is a good cash on cash return to shoot for in your market? And the best way to do this is talking to local real estate investors. You see, you can't just blanket it and say it's not a good deal unless you get a 12% return because in some markets, that's just unrealistic. In Los Angeles, you're probably never gonna find a deal that gives a cash on cash return of 12%. But in Memphis, it might be a minimum requirement for it to even make sense as an investment. So the point is talking to your local investors can give you insight into what is realistic numbers to shoot for. The second thing you really wanna do is get a good grasp on market value. What I mean by that is you wanna understand what is the going price per square foot for the type of property you're looking at. If you're looking at a two bedroom, one bath that's a thousand square feet, what is the typical price per square foot for that property? Because that's gonna be a good indicator whether or not you got a good deal. Now you do have to be careful with this because you don't wanna take say a fully renovated property, comparing it against a property that needs $50,000 of repairs and thinking you're getting a great deal because it's just a little bit cheaper. That's why with the flipping formula, you wanna go 70 cents, 75 cents on the dollar minus repairs. So that means without repairs even being involved, you're talking about getting it 70 to 75 cents on the dollar. So anyways, these are the four things you needed to know before you ever invest in real estate. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did and you felt like you gained some value, do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you haven't already done so, please, you gotta do it. You gotta subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. Finally, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at The Out of State Investor. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.